Okay, so here's a quick video on um, how to find the dimension of this vector space. And um, this, in this way, it will also be a lot easier to find out a lot about these vectors and this vector space in particular. So um, what you have to do to start off, and for a lot of problems like this, the best way to go is to put them into a big augmented matrix, which is to say to do V1 with V2 with V3, with V4, like that, in one big matrix, and then you have to reduce it using the Gauss-Jordan algorithm, reduce it to reduced echelon form. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, I won't go through all the steps. Um, you can find some video on how to reduce things if you wish, uh, but I'll, show, I'll give, show you the outcome. So here we have the reduced row echelon form of the uh, original augmented matrix on the right here uh, and you can see, you can mark out the pivots are here and here and that means that the rank of this matrix is um, 2 the rank is 2 uh, and the interesting thing about that is that that is the dimension of the vector space which is what we're looking for Dimension of the vector space is equal to the rank of the row, reduced row echelon form, sorry, of the augmented matrix. Vi, as it were. So that's that's quite interesting and a lot easier way of looking at it. Uh, just reduce it to reduced row echelon form and then you, you put your answer. But then what if we're asked um, what uh, what is a basis for V. Well, our pivot columns here show what is a basis for V, which is quite interesting. So I'll just rub this out here. So if you'll then ask for a basis of the vector space you've just um, just made, then what you do is you take these these two here. Right, you can see them there. Uh, and these correspond, remember this is, if you think of it like a co coefficient matrix, then this is vector 1, this is vector 2, this is vector 3, this is vector 4, sorry about the handwriting. So that means that the pivot columns are V1 and V3, and that means that um, V1, V3 forms, that's a terrible bracket, forms a basis of V. And that's a lot easier than I thought uh, when I first learned how to do this. So that's something quite interesting. And now what if we are asked to decompose all of the vectors, the original four vectors, um, with uh, with respect to the um, basis that we've just made. Well the basis as we said is just uh, these two here and again using this matrix that we spent not so long creating um, we can actually decompose each of these vectors with respect to the basis quite easily if you write down the side here in your pivot uh, the pivot rows as it were that um, this is V1 here and this one is V3 then if we go along the bottom uh, along here we can actually just read it out like a coefficient matrix but this way and then quite simply we'd see that uh, V1 there's only there's only one here so obviously V1 it's kind of kind of a pointless thing to write but V1 equals V1 then here we find that um, V2 is equal to 2 V1 and the way we did that is if we get V2 here and we look up up here and in the V1 col uh, row, we have two. Sorry, I'm just get rid of that in case people think it's a pivot. So that means that obviously the co coefficient there is two, right? And then again, V3, we kind of got a pointless, uh, pointless thing to write there. V3, and then finally, um, we have the V4. Sorry, I'm run out of room. Is equal to minus three V1 plus V3. 
And there we go. We've we're, we've decomposed all the vectors with respect to the basis. So I'm just showing that if you get a really difficult, massive question asking about, you know, um, these vectors and their span, then just do what I've done here, and it makes it an awful lot easier. So thanks for watching. Sorry it was a bit of a mess.